California's Pacific Ocean coast is filled with thousands of holes and is still an unexplained mystery. Researchers explained that the origins of some of the seafloor holes they studied remains unclear. There's plenty of work to be done in order to solve this mystery. Researchers from Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute, M. Barry, this is where we get their images from, they've made a recent a peculiar discovery. They were surveying the seafloor of the coast of California. This is where the area is supposed to be used for uh, wind farms. And it turns out that uh, it's dotted with thousands of holes of various sizes, according to Fizz. Dot org. They presented their findings in the fall of 2018, meeting the uh, American Geophysical Union in San Francisco. The researchers Eve Lunston and Charles Paul explained that these holes they discovered essentially come in two varieties. The first one being the so-called POC marks, P-O-C-K-M-A-R-K-S, POC marks. They measure about 175 meters, that's about 600 feet. Yeah, something like that. And five meters deep, that's 15 feet deep on average. So they're pretty big. And they're nearly circular and fairly evenly spaced. What does that mean? <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm laughing. Fairly evenly spaced? How does that happen? Well, some of these pop marks were originally detected by M. Barry back in 1999. Subsequent surveys conducted in recent years led to the discovery of over 5,200 such features spreading out over a space of 1,300 square kilometers. The media outlet described it as the largest known pockmark field in North America. To me, I don't understand why, though, uh, these things are so evenly spaced. What causes them to be like that? Very strange. Okay, let's keep on going with the, uh, with the this is on Sputnik News. Um, the second variety we said called micro depressions. They measure about 11 meters uh, across, that's about 33 feet across, and one meter deep on average, that's about three feet down. Researchers hypothesizing that these features are relatively new and were, quote, excavated by local seafloor currents, end quote. Well, if they were excavated by local seafloor currents, how could they, they be evenly distributed? I mean, when you're talking about evenly distributed, to me it looks like it's an intentional construction and excavation of some kind. Don't you think? Now, the media also points out that the, while the seafloor puck marks have been found in other parts of the world as well and are associated with release of methane gas and other fluids from the seabed, researchers discovered no evidence of methane in the water here or sediment in the area where they were investigating. So they, it was not obviously caused by methane discharging from the, the uh, emissions. They have recently found tremendous amount of methane faults off the coast of uh, Cascadia and Florida. So hundreds and th hundreds of them. Now the cause and persistence of these pockmarks still remains a mystery, but we find no evidence they were created from gas or fluid in the seafloor in the recent past at Lunson. The micro depressions are recently formed erosional features. They are not incipient pockmarks. So the mystery here basically is the pockmarks. She also said that there's still plenty of work to be done to determine how all these features were formed and that this work is still in progress. And this is according now to uh, Science Alert. The mysterious holes found in the ocean floor off the California coast, just off the Big Sur, the underwater survey found thousands of small round divots scooped out of the soft sediment in the seafloor. While it's not clear how these holes were formed, they seem to have quickly become popular among seafloor critters as desirable shelters, of course. And this is, uh, these are the images of Ambari, as we said. 30% of these indentations were found to contain human garbage, along with fish and other marine beasties, using that garbage as habitat. And discovery was made as part of the survey to study underwater features called the puck marks and also depressions in the seafloor, somewhat bigger than average. It's about 574 feet across and 16 feet deep. So that, you know, 600 feet across is quite big, don't you think? The pockmarks show up on 
ship monitored sonar, so they've been known to exist about uh, since the 1999 sonar survey. There are over 5,200 of them spread out over 500 square miles of the seafloor near Big Sur. Now what caused them is still a mystery. They don't know what caused them. And since the area is being considered for offshore wind farm, uh, how is that possible to put the wind farm on there with all these pot, uh, pot, pot mark, puck marks on there? So a further investigation is needed. If the holes are caused by gases such as methane under the seafloor and leaving depressions in their wake, one of the leading theories, that could affect the placement of wind turbines, obviously. Even if there's no methane there, these puck marks, if you don't know what caused them, how could you put wind farms up there? So uh, it's not the micro depressions so much are, that are the, the little ones that are uh, uh, a mystery. The big ones that are put there in a type of a regular fashion, recurring in a regular fashion, nearly circular and fairly evenly spaced, they said. That's very strange. So what do you think they could be? I mean, okay, the methane, we know what they are coming from the faults because they we do have off um, seamounts and uh, underwater volcanoes, uh, especially in the area off Cascadia. And now we found recently that they have fault lines that they didn't know were there and uh, methane released from there. They also have that on the East Coast, by the way. But these puck marks evenly distributed Circular, nearly circular, and fairly evenly spaced. The fairly evenly spaced to me sounds constructed. So I'll leave links below for you for this. Thank you. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.